Wait, I know what you're thinking. Jordan, did you dye your hair like a grayish? Grayish color? No, no, I did not. You can accomplish this as well. If you just keep spraying that dry shampoo, eventually your hair will change colors. Little hair tip for you. Hey, hey, Jordan here, and welcome back to another video. I am pumped that you're here because today, today we are editing those photos that we took last week of my sister Jenna, where I compared the 85 millimeter lens to the 50 millimeter lens. So if you wanna see that video, I'll just put it up here at the top. I'm pumped to see what these are gonna look like and excited to share my editing process for editing those dreary overcast photos inside Lightroom because they don't have to be so dreary. We're gonna make that happen. And it's snowing. It's snowing. First snow here in Missouri. Don't don't laugh at me. It's exciting. It's a good day. A good, good day. five different scenes, we'll call it, that we'll be editing today. So the photos of Jen and the leaves, the ones in front of the greenhouse, the ones we took in front of that fall bush thing, Jenna walking toward us, and the photos that we shot through the tree. But the first thing you wanna do is go over to detail under the develop module, and we're gonna work on the sharpening. So if you drag it all the way up, you'll see that the image is super sharp, and it doesn't really look, it doesn't look good at all. So we're gonna bring that back down. And to make sure that only the in focus parts of the image are in focus, you just hold down Option on your keyboard and then drag the masking up. Option lets you see what's happening inside the slider and we will drag it up so that just the subject is in focus. Once you've done that, there is a box you wanna check under lens corrections. So you can actually check them both, remove chromatic aberration and enable profile corrections, but you always, always wanna check enable profile corrections. And for an image like this, I'm just gonna edit this one from scratch so you can see what I would do with a photo like this. So I'd bring up the exposure just a little bit and then drop those highlights in white, bring up the shadows, probably just a little bit, bring down the blacks, maybe just a bump of contrast. I'll drop the clarity to negative two and bring the vibrance up a little bit. Under the tone curve, I can brighten it up just a little bit more. And if I feel like the shadow area is too much, then I can always grab that point and bring it up a little bit here in the tone curve as well. So this is before and this is after that image. Quick little edit. Since there are red leaves in the trees and on the ground, it could throw those reds back up onto her skin tones. So you just wanna check this slider right here. Let's bring it over here to the left. So that's too green, that's too pink. How do you fine tune this and make sure it's just right? Well, you look up here at your histogram and once you see those reds and pinks start out beyond this little gray curve, then you know it's overly pink. Same thing on the left side. If you see those greens start out and you don't have a ton of greens in the image, then you know that your tint is a little bit off. So for an image like this, I'm gonna probably drop it down to zero. We'll play around with negative 10. That feels a little too green to me, so let's go with negative three. From there, maybe bring up the exposure just a little bit more and call it good. And since this is a professional shoot, I wanna make sure these look spot on, so I'm gonna use the presets that I've made. Inside there are one-click presets, and then there are mix and match presets. Today we'll probably just look at Britley Fuji and Britley Portra, in which Britley Portra is obviously based off Portra film, and then Britley Fuji is based off Fuji film as well. Just because her eye is shaded from her hood, I'm gonna go with Britley Fuji, and then I can just bring up those shadows just a smidge and bring up the exposure. I'll adjust my tint, and that image is good to go so I will just sync that with the rest of these leaves photos. To do that, make sure all are checked and then remove spot removal and crop. From there, you just go in and make little tweaks to make sure that everything blends together. One common misconception with Light Mary photography is that you can't have any shadows in your image. And if you nix all of the shadows in your image, it just makes it a little less interesting. So I like to keep my shadows intact. So don't bump your shadows up too much, just enough so that there's still this depth. I wouldn't normally bring my shadows up to 76, but because that first image, it had so many shadows here, that's why I'm doing that. I can see that her skin is still a little bright, so I'm gonna go highlights and bring down the whites as well. From there, I can bring up the exposure and that image is good to go. Crop this image in, sync it up. I like to sync the next images in the set if I make a tweak, just to save me time. So here's before and here's after. 
playing around with the temperature on this one, sync it up. And since these greens look a little too yellow, I'm gonna go down here and select muted saturation just to drop it just a little bit more. And insider trick, you can always layer these presets on top of the Brittley Fuji and Brittley Portrait presets. I want a little bit more umph to this image, so I'm gonna select Brittley Portra. And I know that I'll need to drag up my shadows just a little bit. I'll bring down that contrast and bring down those highlights just to protect her skin tones here. Warm it up, a few more pinks, and I'll just sync those images. Double click on the blacks to bring them back to zero, just for something that's still a little bit more soft, and sync them up. Another edit from scratch for you, so I'll use the free preset. You can get that at freepreset.com. If you are adjusting this temp slider and something's off and you don't really know what to do, try adjusting the tint slider with it and just see if that does the trick. So anytime you bring this temperature slider down, generally speaking, if something's off, try lowering the tint on this image. To avoid a dull image on an overcast day, bring down your blacks before you just up your contrast. So see how upping my contrast just makes the image look sharp, super saturated. So instead of doing that, try lowering the blacks and seeing if that does the trick. So there's before and after on an edit from scratch with the free preset. I'd really love for these greens to stand out so I'm going to click Brittley Portra and then I can adjust my temperature from there. Bring down my exposure just a little bit and then I'm going to double click on these blacks just because this area down here is so dark. So there's before and there's after. Before and after. I'll sync these with the rest of the photos in this set. These blacks are out of control. Just kidding. But I am going to bump them up just a little bit. Let's go with 20, like even numbers. <laughs> and then we'll just sync those up. For this image, I'll just bring up those shadows and bring down that exposure just one little click. Bring the exposure back up on this image. I love this. I love this whole scene. This whole, this fall bush. Still love it guys. Drop the exposure just a little bit and bring down those pinks. This image is still a little contrasty, which is what Portra would do if you were shooting it. But I think that what I'll do is just hit reset and then select Brittley Fuji. It's a really soft and muted edit. And so we'll just sync it up with the next photo. Bring down the exposure on this one. One other tip for editing overcast photos, normally I would edit on a medium or light gray screen, but when you're editing overcast photos, I found that it's best to just go ahead and switch to a white background color, or your brain, your eyes, whatever it is, ends up playing tricks on you, and you try to match this as your white, and it just ends up looking kind of dull. So make sure you switch the background color to white. You can do that by control or right clicking right here in this area, and then selecting white. I think we'll just keep our Fuji rolling for right now. Yep, and I love that. We'll just drop that exposure a smidge and sync it up. We'll sync it up through this whole scene. That one's good to go. It doesn't need any adjusting. For this last scene, I'm gonna use the free preset and show you which sliders I would adjust over here. When you drag these sliders around, you'll see down here her boots are changing. So if I wanted her boots to have a little bit more of an orange color, I can easily change it there. Just keep in mind, a lot of these sliders, they're messing with more than just the most obvious color in the frame because they'll also mess with skin tones. And you can see that here. If I was gonna do that, maybe I would add plus five. Same thing here with orange. We'll leave it alone. Yellows, we'll leave alone. I love, and you can see this in one of my blog posts where I talk about HSL, but I love bringing up the greens just a little bit. And for this one, since her blue jeans are a little blue, I'm gonna just drag it over here into a darker blue. I'll actually decrease the luminance on the jeans as well. While I'm here, we'll bump up her skin tones and to give a little pop to the red, we're gonna decrease the reds here. Under saturation, I always take out oranges, yellows, and greens. And then if her blue jeans were really overpowering or you wanted to add a little bit more of a pop, you can mess with that slider here. So there's before and after with the free preset and a few HSL adjustments. I really want to pop a color here, so I'm going to go with Brittley Portra. Double click on the blacks, maybe even bring them up just a little bit to soften up her jeans. That's where I'm looking right here. And then we'll need to warm it up as well. Highlights and we'll bring those down. Next image, I might cool it off just a smidge, but I really love the way this is looking. And I may add a little more pinks in here. We'll crop this one in. On this one, I'm going to drop that contrast and then I can just bring it back up to the point where I want because it just seemed a little contrasty to me. I'll sync that with the last photo in the gallery. 
Once I'm finished, I just do a final glance at the gallery just to make sure everything looks good. You can do that by going back over to the library module and clicking Command minus on your keyboard. This is gonna show you all of your image in a smaller grid view. Go through, squint your eyes, and see if anything looks too contrasty or too dark or if the coloring looks off. So since everything looks good there, I'm gonna click Command plus on my keyboard and scroll through each photo really quick just to make sure all of the coloring, lighting, shadows, contrast, everything looks really good. So see this image, I love a bright image, but this image is a little too bright. So I'm just gonna bring that exposure back down. And yes, this image is brighter than the rest, but nothing is blown out or anything, so I'm gonna keep it. I love that image. From there, I just export them, upload them to the client, blog them, market them, really do the whole launch thing with them. But as far as the editing goes, I'm good. I'll be brewing another cup of Earl Grey, also staying hydrated because that's really important. We have to stay hydrated, us creatives. If you like this video, hit that thumbs up button, subscribe if you haven't already, and comment down below and tell me, what is your favorite way to edit? Are you a laptop user or do you prefer the good old-fashioned desktop? What's your favorite, absolute favorite way to edit? If you want to see the full blog post and the final photos that made it to the blog post, like the exact photos, the exact way I've laid out for a client, then you can get that link down below in the description or you can go to jordanbrilly.com slash blog and just search how to edit overcast photos. Don't forget that you can always pin this video and re-watch it next time you open up and you've got an overcast editing sesh ahead of you. If you need me, I'll be sipping on some Earl Grey, celebrating another editing sesh win, even though it only took a few minutes. Hey, you gotta celebrate, you gotta celebrate. Cheers to you.